as you can see on this picture, um, Russia is a big industrial uh, user of Baltic Sea. And that causes uh, that Russia is one of the greatest polluters in Europe. Uh, I, I got this uh, uh, from uh, Swedish and from Finnish different uh, statistics. Uh, I don't have on my my own because I'm not a scientist. Uh, so. Um, and uh, I, I, in this picture, I tried to explain why does it happen, uh, because authorities in Russia uh, easily ignore laws. So law in Russia doesn't work as, as, it, as it might work. And um, also here in Leningrad region, we use uh, Baltic Sea uh, for our nuclear power station, which gives uh, which gives uh, us uh, here in St. Petersburg uh, our electrical power. And uh, I can con continue. So uh, you can, I think that uh, a previous speaker uh, was right that uh, nobody thinks about uh, some sports and so on. Uh, we just uh, have a lot of gas, oil, coal, and so on. And we use sea just to make this uh, transport. And also marine strategy from you know, 20, 30 years uh, is uh, supposed to use our Baltic ports for transit of Chinese uh, different um, containers. And so, uh, so Russia is just used as uh, kept some road from them. So maybe you remember that there was a great uh, silk. Okay, so you can see how how does the story go on. Uh, in the beginning of 19th, there was only three big ports. Uh, so I I, um, I showed our nuclear power plant. But this molnia, как по-английски, меня Lightning. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, so this is where the nuclear power plant stands. Of course, it existed in 19s, and also it was a port in Saint Petersburg, small, very small port in Weber, and a small port in the city of Vysotsk. And these both are. Uh, not very big right now, and you can move uh, to the next picture. So you can see how the situation changed uh, uh, nowadays. Yes, uh, we've got a lot of ports, and some of them are really giant ports. You know that uh, that one that you uh, see in the bottom of the of the picture. Uh, its name is Ustluga. It is believed to be the largest port on the Baltic Sea. Uh, Port Bronca is a part of Port St. Petersburg, and it's also very big. And Port Vysotsk is now uh, having three or four um, uh, different ports. And Primorsk, which I will be talking very um, much uh, in this, uh, my <laughs> so you see that uh, there is a lot of them, and uh, if you watch to that port, or which is very close to the fin to Finland, it's now it's not ready already working. It's part of uh, uh, Nord Stream One, and uh, there it, it's it, it is already built, but it doesn't get uh, ships right now. So we can move on with the next picture. Yes, so yes, this is Baltic leader. I, I just, uh, if somebody doesn't even hear about this, I just made some pictures of it. Uh, this year, it was a very great uh, scandal <laughs> when these pink clouds were, and then they uh, fell into the sea and it became dark, dark pink. Purple Sea, uh, and there are usual cla usual claims on Port Ostluga of coal dust and black snow and so on. So let let's move 
next picture. Uh, so uh, you, you, you may, so just a couple of words, so of course, the St. Petersburg port, you know, it's, uh, no one can deny that St. Petersburg is a city and a port, and Port Blanc is now uh, built as um, attempt to uh, move uh, something from uh, the center of the city. And unfortunately, Port Bronc doesn't give any information about uh, their cargo turnover in last years. I didn't find anything. So let, let's move next. Uh, and now Primorsk Seaport Transnet. Uh, so you can see this orange round. It is a place where people live. So I, I just wanted you to see how close is the place where people live and uh, these uh, great industrial objects. So it's there's a, it's something like no, no, no maybe 20, uh, 200, 200 meters, something like that. And uh, it's a state monopoly or uh, transnet. It's oil corporation, which uh, was believed to go at, at first time in the middle of 19th, it was planned to go to Korva, to Finland, but um, in 1998, as I remember, uh, it was desired to make a lot of ports here in Leningrad region. And we changed our uh, politics um, international. <laughs> So, and we decided that we need to have our own port. That's why it was, uh, this uh, tube <laughs> was turned here to Primorsk. And uh, I know that Greenpeace and other uh, ecological movements of that time, at first, just didn't believe that it is possible to make a port here on Karelian, Kar Karelian Isthmus, because Karelian Isthmus in Russia is believed to be something like national reserve, and it was a great disappointment for everyone. But uh, this was not the the only problem because after this came, uh, now we see that all this region that you see you, you, uh, on this picture you can see that uh, part of the forest is now destroyed and. In this year, it was destroyed much more than on this picture. So let's let's move next. Oh uh, yes, a uh, couple of words about Vos Vosotsk. It's a very small city. It is believed to be the smallest city in Russia. And um, uh, at first, uh, in uh, 2004, it came Port Luke Oil. It's an oil port, so uh, diesel fuel and so on. Uh, after that uh, came Port Vysotsky, which is a true coal port. I think you can see it on the picture, it is black so, uh, because there are dozens of coal. But it's, on, of course, it is not so big as Ustluga. It's uh, definitely another. Uh, so, But uh, the same claims as coal dust and black snow because you can see that coal port is right in. It, <laughs> Maybe you can see that it's inside of the city, yes. Uh, and uh, a lot of claims uh, about noise because they don't stop. So it's loading, loading, loading. Uh, then they have uh, uh, 30 minutes break on uh, dinner. And then they load in, load in, load in. And then uh, they have another uh, 30 minutes uh, break for changing uh, workers. And that's all. all. All other time, people there in Vosotsk are here in all this work. A lot of people leave their homes or trying to sell them if they have. If, so if, if they have no success in selling their houses, they just close the door and move somewhere from this small city. Uh, let's and also Green Port is planned, or and Korea Gas Vosotsk is. Uh, uh, the third uh, that they have already, it uh, sells liquid gas. And now we come to the Primorsky Upeka project. It's uh, very big. You, you can see, so it's just 
like view from the plane because uh, if you watch it on google map it it looks yes so you can see where is uh how how does it look on the in, in real life and let's go there back there we were okay oh so yes this is an actual plan um it, it, Primorsky Baka is designed to be uh, our new largest port on the Baltic Sea. So Ostluga is not enough. <laughs> I think that uh, it's quite, it makes clear what Russia thinks about Baltic shore. We, we, we need ports and nothing more. <laughs> uh, we, we don't need small ports. We, we need to have biggest ports in the world. <laughs> oh, so oh, oh, if, if not, then just in Europe. So uh, I would like to joke, but in, in fact, it's a very sad situation because a lot of people who live in Primorsk and in all the Leningrad region and in St. Petersburg were trying to stop this project. There were uh, judgment in uh, court and uh, a lot of attempts, a lot of meetings, and my, me, myself, was taking part to um, trying to stop this so I, yeah, we also <laughs> we even make this stop word <laughs> so it, it is a great uh, and unique uh, experience for people but unfortunately state uh, especially when state enforces ex-criminals is a very big force and small people like me have not so much opportunities to stop this. Can you please move to the next slide? One of the interesting features uh, 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 is that no one really knows what they are uh, planning to do because uh, we believe that they may state one and then make something in, something else, not that is uh, in official answers for us. Uh, here on slide you can see on this picture so their plans. I, 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 I can't comment. I can't uh, say if it is real or it is just something like imaginary. Uh, but uh, this is what they want to do. So it, they say that it is the, um, one of the deepest places where uh, a port can be made. So yes, um, while we were trying to stop this project. Uh, uh, people gathered a lot of money and uh, tried to pay them to get uh, an independent expertise, which uh, were, uh, where we can see real, uh, uh, re re really what happened to Baltic Sea if this project is, uh, will come to life. So please move on. Uh, so yeah, one of the main problem is of course begin the water because uh, there are a lot of sea plants in this place and a lot of small uh, animals, uh, phytoplankton. And I'm, I'm, I, I hope it's right in English. And all this will be gone, gone away. So it, it will cause trouble to fish and uh, troubles with fish will cause trouble to birds and to seals and you can imagine that uh, it's it breaks really a, a big uh, part of soil under the uh, bottom i'm sorry sometimes i can't remember simple words so it's quite a great it, it's a very great uh, work and ground works uh, so carbon footprint no research it's not the only trouble with all this because the, nothing uh, had uh, to so they just put away all this soil and they just throw it in other place and uh, no 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 risks of this are uh, promised to be and so uh, all this causes a lot of strength a lot of uh, breaking borders uh, our we, we, we tried to talk to government we tried to make some dialogue and unfortunately in nowadays we have got no result 
you, you, you can move on by my next. So a couple of words about fauna risks. So, uh, so the, one of the main you know, creatures that, that will suffer is, is birds. Uh, there are a lot of protected species, species in this place. Uh, there are small um, islands uh, around the, the British Islands Reserve, uh, which is an international reserve. It's protected by Ramsar Convention. Uh, but uh, as you see, all this makes no sense to those who desired, desired to make port here. So I just pointed a little bit uh, to say nothing about uh, forest losses, which are really great. So now it's more than 1,000 of hectares of really very beautiful wild forest full of forest animals who lose now they lose their home and the people who live there uh, say that a lot of uh, animals just come to their homes a lot of foxes a lot of hares bigger animals too and uh, a, a lot of uh, animals are running through the primorsky road and uh, they may cause damage to car and so on and so on. And of course, as, as I've already mentioned, uh, fishes will suffer. So that uh, that is uh, really a great trouble for, for, for all the chain. Here you can see why state uh, doesn't say stop to all this. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Russian government is really a big interest of this project, and of course, <laughs> so you, uh, it's just a, a translation of document. You can return to that picture. Is it possible to return? So, a Russian state uh, d d doesn't care if any project gives uh, us any risk. Uh, because uh, if you read the Russian marine, marine strategy, it's all about having a, a lot of money from our small Baltic shore because Russia doesn't have a lot of pieces of sh offshore. Uh, you know, that, that's why our Emperor Peter the Great <laughs> made St. Petersburg here because we wanted to have this window to Europe. And now uh, it, it was, it was a, but what uh, it was a great idea in the 18th century and now I suppose we, we can move to gentle use of nature. I, I believe that it is possible. Uh, I hope so, but uh, I, I realized that people who have got power in their hands are not interested in it. That's why maybe Russian ecological activists are not so <laughs> <laughs> so gay, <laughs> so, so 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 full of hope. Uh, maybe we are in that in in that point where people are starting to lose the hopes for a future, and a lot of uh, ecological activists are moving from Russia to other countries because they think that there is no idea to live here more. <laughs> Uh, so they are leaving their own countries, but uh, those who stay here are trying to continue the um, yes battle. Thank you. <laughs> so we are trying to continue, and uh, by this new year, I wrote in our group that uh, in nine in 1943, uh, Soviet Union was believed to ruin Second World War, but finally, uh, Soviet soldiers went to Berlin and. We are trying to give hope to those who live there in Primorsk uh, because a lot of people there in Primorsk don't believe that they can do anything. And we are trying to say that if we will unite, we can do a lot of things. And we are trying to give them hope that uh, if they are really willing to save their country, it is possible. Uh, they just need to unite. They, they don't need to be scared because a lot of them uh, are very much scared that they can uh, lose their job, or have something, some harmful damage in, in other ways, or just go to prison. And uh, they're trying to 
just close their eyes on this tr trouble and, and me and my friends are trying to open their eyes and say, no, you need to see what's happening and you need to take part in what happens in your country. Uh, if, if you won't do it, any, no, nobody will do it. So that's our point. 